So some awesome images just recently dropped. This is hot off the press. It seems that there was a convention called the Unboxing Toy Convention that was happening in Mexico. And there had a huge panel that was being live streamed on the internet. And it featured a whole bunch of Hasbro uh, creators. And they had this great panel with a whole bunch of stuff that was never revealed. Stuff that we, we kind of knew was coming. Some stuff that we didn't know that was coming. And it was all revealed in this panel. And we got some really good shots of it. Hopefully there'll be high res images that'll be showing up on the internet. But we got some really good shots of some of the, the figures that were featured here. There's four big mentions that there is but i only really want to talk about two of them and that's of rc and her crew and hot rod my boy uh, but we'll go through them all kind of quickly we have the bumblebee 2007 camaro this can be part of studio series it seems like they're just they want to revisit that again it says here we'll have the battle mask and his blaster super accurate detailed robot mode all right another bumblebee um then we have the Dark of the Moon Soundwave. So if you weren't happy with your Deluxe one or your Human Alliance one, um, it looks like they're going to do a Studio Series one. It says it's going to come with Laserbeak. It's going to be the Mercedes-Benz. All right. Let's talk about the other two. So first we'll talk about the RC triplets, or we'll call it the RC uh, team, which is that of RC, Chromia, and Alita. It's going to be a three-pack. It's going to be in the deluxe assortment. And according to what they say here, it's going to be a smaller scale but much higher detail. That's what they said pretty much to sum it up. Now, originally, these characters were done in the deluxe scale, and they didn't have like... Um, they didn't have like a complete show accuracy, excuse me, movie accuracy. Some were just kind of repaints of each other and it didn't really match how they looked in the movie. And it was, you know, it was what it was. Uh, from what I heard from, say, like Alex Milne and stuff, who worked on some of the, uh, let's call it the supplemental material of the movie stuff early on with IDW, he said that there was a lot of, you know, tweaks and changes to the designs of those characters as they were finalizing Revenge of the Fallen. And I mean, it even had, you know, you could look online their their dubious kind of crazy combiner mode where they kind of like combined together and made this weird, I don't even know how to describe it. You just have to see an image of it. It's very bizarre how they looked when they were combined. And the toy can somewhat do that, the deluxes, but not exactly. Again, it was something that was engineered out of the toy for the final product. And then, of course, like when you had the Human Alliance stuff, they had like these smaller versions of them. I almost want to call them legend scale, but they were kind of like in between a scout and a legend. And they did those too. And those were, you know, they were what they were at that price point. You couldn't really get so much detail, paint and everything and, and accuracy out of that. So these ones, it says here, it's going to be a smaller scale, but it'll be in that deluxe price point and it'll be much highly detailed. This is their exact word. So I'm hoping, I mean, judging by the images here, it looks like each one of them has its own unique kind of looking head sculpt. It's a unique kind of looking motorcycle alt mode and pieces. So it looks like we're going to get some really good movie accurate uh, RC triplets here or the RC team from Revenge of the Fallen. And I'm really excited about that. That's going to be cool. And at a deluxe price point, that really makes it worth it because that Studio Series deluxe price point could be sometimes really hard to swallow especially like with the likes of, let's say, the jazz that we got through the recent years and stuff. But I mean, three and one, I, I could get behind that. And I, you know what? If it has that combiner gimmick still somehow maintained, which I doubt, but if it does, that'd be really cool too. Second one I want to talk about, this is the one I'm excited about, is Transformers The Last Night World War II Autobot Hot Rod. Now, this one's kind of, I'm excited about it, but at the same time, I'm kind of like, wow, there's there's a lot of stuff to talk about here. Uh, number one, um, it's a repaint. It's a repaint slash retool of the World War II Bumblebee Studio Series that was shown to us. Now, the thing with that is, even though it's a repaint retool, that's kind of that's kind of not what Hot Rod was in that quick flashback. I mean, there's not a lot of meat on the bone from that scene to really pull from. But essentially, like to break it down, what it was is. Hot Rod in that World War II flashback, he was, his alt mode was what was called a stayer truck. Stayer, that's how it's pronounced, stayer truck. And when he transformed, uh, his robot mode kind of had like these kibble and armor bits from an M8 armored car, which was kind of like, okay. 
And I mean, Josh Nizzi, who was one of the concept artists for the last night movie, like he revealed all these like concept images and you could kind of see like, oh, okay, like that's what kind of created the confusion with the alt mode to the robot mode because the Josh Nizzi concept art really showed, you know, that that armored M8 kind of tank stuff and you kind of see it present in different things there. And uh, with the concept art, it kept his gun, like the gun that he ended up having. And again, he uses it in the movie in the modern time, too, when he's a Lambo. But you just kind of see like those early concept images and everything of that. So ultimately, in the end, because he's now a repaint retool of Bumblebee, he's one of those Humber light reconnaissance cars instead. So it's kind of it's kind of unfortunate that's not 100% movie accurate but i think it was also them going like you know what the inconsistency between the alt mode and the robot mode is already confusing in the movie combined with the fact that if we do an accurate alt mode the robot mode's going to not match if we do an accurate robot mode the alt mode's not going to match why don't we just kind of take bumblebee that was kind of his you know you know blood brother and everything in this war and why don't we just kind of just do a repaint retool and just have it be that? And that's literally what he is. I mean, when you look carefully at the details, uh, the alt mode is, is pretty much almost the exact same thing. It's just that the the robot mode, you could clearly see there's a lot of details that are different in, in the knees and the chest. Obviously, the weapons are different. You don't have Bumblebee's Warhammer. You don't have Bumblebee's kind of gun. Instead, you have Hot Rod's gun instead. You have the new uh, retooled shoulders, new retooled form. There's a lot of retooling here. The alt mode is pretty consistent, minus a few little things here and there. But it's the robot mode that really you see there's big differences in the weapons and stuff. So I still appreciate the effort. I mean, it's better than nothing, in my opinion. But I think it's also because of how difficult it is for that character, because it was such a short flashback scene and there really was, you know, it turned into one thing and the other, and there, there, it really makes the transformation impossible to kind of get both. So I appreciate that they did this instead. And, and this is really cool. This is really interesting, and, and I really dig that those two things. And it's finally something from the Studio Series line that I really want to go out of my way and pick up because I've picked up pretty much every piece of Hot Rod movie merchandise up to this point, even some of the oddball stuff that came from uh, the Bumblebee movie where you know Hot Rod had all these toys from the Bumblebee movie, but he really wasn't in the movie at all. Uh, kind of makes me wish that the IDW comics still existed. It probably would have been supplemental material explaining you know, Bumblebee and Hot Rod with his 80s adventures, who knows. But anyways, point is, is that this is really cool. I really dig this. So I'm excited about these two studio series, guys. I mean, the other two, I mean, I don't want to like hate on Bumblebee, but it's like, I mean, another 2007 Camaro. All right, sure. Um, in that deluxe price point. And again, the Soundwave, I guess I could appreciate that one because both of his uh studio series excuse me both of his dark of the moon releases were kind of difficult to pick up depending on what region you're in so this makes a more mainstream way to pick up the dark of the moon mercedes sound wave so that's cool but anyways these two i'm really excited about let me know what you think about this this is really awesome stuff and hopefully we'll get some nicer images uh, in the next couple of days